Zoe Morgan and the Investors Society. Thank you. Thank you. Epidemiology is very useful to us in psychiatry in a, in a number of ways. It, it tells us how common certain conditions are, it tells us which groups are more likely to be affected so that we're more alert to that when we're actually assessing people and, and looking at what kind of condition they may be suffering from. Lots of families on the beach, there's a speedboat. He helps us to begin to work out what factors may be contributing to their condition. We can also use it to look at whether populations change over time, whether the treatments that we're using are effective in populations and helping to improve levels of mental health in populations. Okay, so our next activity is a book. Over the last 20 years, the Social and Epidemiological Psychiatry Group at the University of Leicester have been conducting epidemiology surveys every seven years in the general population to track rates of depression. We would have expected things to be getting better because more and more people are being recognised as having depression and, and more and more people are actually seeking and accepting treatment for this. But in fact what we've been finding uh, is that rates of depression are not declining. Uh, if anything, they're, they're rising, particularly in younger women. And we got interested in the idea that we, we could begin to develop methods for preventing this. Hi Val Jinder. Hello. Hello. My Hi. name's Sarah. I'm one of the midwives that are working today. How are you? I'm fine. Okay, and how's baby? feeding well. The Pregnancy and Wellbeing, or PAUSE, pilot study trained community midwives to risk assess pregnant women in relation to their emotional health and well-being. The community midwives also had training in relation to psychological intervention, cognitive behavioural approach, and psychological therapists did that training with them. The community midwives found that training excellent because when they identified a risk with a woman using the Edinburgh Perinatal Depression Scale, they were able to offer these women cognitive behavioural approach. They offered them three sessions, so they were able to offer the intervention straight away. And what we found was that these community midwives showed good indications that this intervention was effective and we want to be able to deliver this across the services with all our community midwives. So epidemiology has led to a new approach to who can deliver treatment in maternity cases. Another insight that it's given the team is how sometimes undiagnosed autism can be overlooked in cases of depression in the adult patient. Right, Marshall, I'm going to ask you a few questions now. I'll start off by asking okay. you, do you have a job at the moment? Uh, I volunteer um, three, well, at, at the minute, three days a week in the charity shop. Mm -hmm. As part of this epidemiological research we've been doing with surveys every seven years or so, we realised that we didn't have any information at all on how common autism is in, in adulthood. Uh, nobody had ever looked at this anywhere in the world. There's lots of information on how common it is in childhood. And we realised that we could actually build that into our survey programme. There were several quite surprising results, one of which is that most of the people that we found in our survey who had autism and met criteria for autism uh, were undiagnosed. I mean, they didn't know they had the condition and, and other people didn't know either. The other thing which was interesting and surprising was that although there was some decline in, in how common the condition is and how prevalent it is with increasing age, there were still clearly people in their 50s and 60s and 70s uh, who met criteria for autism spectrum disorder and, as I say, were receiving no help or recognition or any treatment. And you've got the red boy at the very top of the screen, like, mm -hmm. which you can't which nobody would really spot unless you're me. Simon has recently been diagnosed with autism. His father, Neil, believes this diagnosis benefits the family as a whole. It's a great relief to know that Simon is a little bit different to other people. And to know what autism is like, that he has the traits of autism and it helps us to understand his mental, um, mental well-being and his sort of actions. Once we know somebody has autism, they can learn a lot from that. The people who care for them can learn a lot from that so that it's possible to improve the sort of communication with that person and give them a better chance of living independently and, and, and getting employment and staying within employment and so on. 
Studies by the group reveal around 5% of adults under the care of mental health services in England have autism, compared with 1% in the general population. Most of these cases are also undiagnosed. We as psychiatrists, I'm an adult general psychiatrist myself, all over the world have people under our care, some of whom have autism, and we're probably not recognising the fact. That makes our job more difficult because trying to help and support somebody who has this major communication problem without realising what it is makes life much more difficult as, for us as clinicians uh, and makes life more difficult for them. We recognise that in order to help and support them we need to think about other areas of life like housing, employment. There's now training being done with housing officers to help them just very quickly to sort of recognise which of the clients that they're working with may be on the autism spectrum. Uh, and once they understand that's what the problem is and the communication difficulties, they can actually step in and do some really positive things. As researchers and scientists, we want to try and refine and improve the methods that we're using. And bearing in mind that we're the first people to ever tackle measuring a condition like autism in the general population through community surveys, we think there's quite a lot we can do to improve those methods so that it'll be easier for other people to use them in other parts of the world uh, in order to, again, identify which populations are affected and, and to begin to develop policies for supporting them. And epidemiology is, is a very powerful tool for actually measuring whether what you're doing is effective or not.